All right. So now we're actually live. Sorry about that, guys. We are uh, having a time here. Um, oh, there's eight new roles in Among Us, or are they doing a... Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Twitch distracted me. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who are wondering, Chris Melberger just started streaming. So if you're interested, you should go over there and watch Chris Melberger stream. <laughs> He's very funny. <laughs> I don't know anyone else who is, but he is, so you should go watch that. Okay, sorry. I'm useless. Ugh, oh, my lord. How's everybody doing tonight? Is everybody here? Is anybody here? Besides uh, Jacob and his cohort of other long-named Godzilla-type folk. Godzilla-type folk. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we're going to talk about editing tonight. Uh, the The terror and horror that is the terror and horror of being a writer oh yeah it is oh fuck sorry guys i just took a got up from a nap um yeah it's frequently um the bane of lots of writers existences but also some writers um really enjoy it i enjoy having had edited like i i really like love rereading once I've edited. Um, right. That is one of the... I'm going to paint my nails so don't bite them. Um, that is one of the top things I enjoy doing um, as far as being a writer goes. But getting there is terrible. Um, and just to kind of steal the floor for a minute here, one of the problems I have right now is that I used to grab up a book of my like I would print out my book and I would grab up a chunk of it sometimes all of it depending on where I was at and how long it was um and I would like go to a diner or something and I'd get coffee and maybe over time get some fries or something but um I would just focus and and edit while I was there um and since COVID happened I can't just go sit in a diner um I realized that legally you can do that again I think um well, I don't know. Each state's different, but I think in Illinois you finally can. Um, and more power to the people who are comfortable doing that. I'm just absolutely not. Um, you know, and we have we have a my husband's oldest is actively pregnant and having a wedding this summer. So I'd rather not tempt fate by getting COVID and not being able to go to one of those kinds of events because we don't right. have many of those kinds of events um, and we'll get while the getting's good so yeah and I yeah I'm I don't tend to I have not edited in a long time because I am one of those people editing isn't something I hate it's something that terrifies me that's fair um, That's fair. Because I feel like what if I, there's, there's a couple of things, a couple of layers. One is um, what if I hate the story? Mm -hmm. What if I reread it and it's absolute crap and I feel horrible about myself? Now, keep in mind the few things that I have edited, this has never happened. It is. Yes. Yes. There. My experience is typically that I'm surprised that I did so well. Right. Right. But there yeah. is that initial like, this is going to be the one. This is going to be the one where it looks like I got a head wound while I was writing. Right, right. Like, yeah. I'm going to have to explain myself. And and I have edited things where I have, and I don't do this if I edit for someone else because I'm not a terrible fucking person. I mean, well, I am, but not at the same, not that way. Um, but I will write in my own things like, are you fucking stupid yeah, <laughs> when yeah, I'm yeah. editing? Like, I can't, I can't know I did something like use the wrong there. In a disgustingly obvious way. Right, and right. not be like, are you dumb? Like, are <laughs> Did you? you get a head wound before you did this part? Right, because like, I know those things. And that's the hardest part is that, you know, if you're editing someone else's stuff, you don't know what their strengths and weaknesses are. Um, right. And I've never thought you were stupid. And when we first met, you didn't know how to do speech tags. That didn't make you right. stupid. So I wouldn't have looked at that and said, you're an idiot. But if I do a speech tag wrong, because I know I know better. 
Right, right. Then I think I'm stupid. So I don't think other people are stupid for making the same mistakes that I think make me stupid, which is even more ridiculous. Yeah. But to me, that's that's a big part of the reason why I I have a hard time editing, especially mm-hmm. editing novels. I can edit short things, no problem. Yeah. Um, and I edit things that I write professionally, like in my professional jobs in the right. past. Or like I write things for church and I have no problem editing those. Mm-hmm. Um, but the the idea of editing a novel just one, it's terrifying. And then two, it feels overwhelming. It's very daunting, yes. That's yeah. part of the reason when I first started doing editing, I would only bring like a chapter or two with me at a time. Because right. then I didn't have three hundred pages on me. Um because right. three hundred pages is scary. Yeah. And that I think is for me, like, I'm actually planning to do, um, so I, I finished a um, draft. I finished a draft of, of a book I've rewritten several times. Um, <coughs> edited, just rewritten. Um, and I am planning to edit it this July. Like, that's on mm-hmm. my scheduled to do list um and so one of the things that i'm trying to do right now is find all of the tips and tricks of editing so i'm i'm looking at a lot of other like how other people do it how they um um manage i guess to do it without dying um, and so I've been, I've been beefing up on that so I can, I can do that. What about the difference between editing something of yours versus editing, editing something that's not yours? Do you feel like that is different? Oh yeah. Like editing for someone else. Um, the biggest fear I have is, will I hurt this person's feelings? Mm-hmm. Um, and like, you and I have exchanged enough stuff over yeah. the years that I am no longer concerned. I'm no longer concerned about your feelings, Sarah. No, I know that like the stuff I say, you might mock me for it. Right. But you're not going to take it as a personal insult. No, no. Um, yeah. Like and we you're have going to be like, Oh, we can't be friends anymore. Cause you were mean to me over this. Editing. Right. Right. Yeah, I know there was one time when you didn't know a word and I made fun of you because you didn't know the word. That's not surprising. But, but see, I don't remember what word it was. It wasn't sulfurous, which I was accused of making up one time. That's delightful. It still makes me happy. Somebody. Yeah. Knows. Yeah, that's not a word. I'm like, yes, it is. Get a dictionary. Just look it up. And I had someone else accuse me of making up a word, but they were half joking. They said they'd never heard it, but they didn't believe me that it existed. But I don't remember what word that was. But they they were like, I believe you that that's a word, but I've never seen that fucking word before. Right, right. Um, yeah, so those are the two things that, like, the overwhelming and then the fear of it sucking. Um, yeah. But, yeah, editing other people's stuff. In fact, in my old uh, office job, that was a large portion of my job was yeah. my bosses would write these, they'd write uh, scenarios. And so it was a lot of creative writing editing. Mm-hmm. Um, they would write scenarios or sometimes they would write basically essays or, or. That's much papers. more fun than what I added at my day job. I edit like <laughs> reports to the court. So while I'm doing it, I'm also like, would a judge think this was shitty? <laughs> Yeah, that's way more pressure. I'm scared of judges. I'm scared. My biggest fear was always, uh, what if this goes to, uh, what if teachers see this? Because I worked for a school board organization. Yeah. So, like, what if a teacher sees this and thinks I'm an idiot? Um, Although, I've met some some teachers, so there's probably, like, a 50-50 chance on that front. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, and- I, 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 that is not a dig at teachers. Human beings are 50-50 anyway true story we are that's and we need teachers so sometimes you gotta take a teacher when they come 
Yeah. So, so tell me, how do you start your editing process? Typically, the first thing I do is print it out. Um, I used to print it at home. The last time I had to print it at work because um, I love my boss, but work from home murdered my last printer, and it was a very expensive printer. So I have not replaced it. It was like a six hundred dollar printer. So yeah, because I print out three hundred pages at a time. Right. And it ran a law office for almost a year after doing that. Right, right. So, pretty happy with that. Um, but so I printed at work last time. But um, I'm sh- I think I told her. I don't think I don't think I'm even like busting myself out or anything. I'm pretty sure I told her I was going to print it at work one time. Um, but we also have one of those massive printer like a. Like yeah, a like a professional office, printer. office yeah. printer. Yeah. Yeah, who we have affectionately named Tommy Chung because we're pretty sure that when we're not looking, it gets high. <laughs> it's the only explanation for the behavior. It's It just randomly will just be like, I don't know what an envelope is, man. And I'm like, yes, you do! They're in the drawer! They're in the same place they were the last time I printed an envelope. And it's like, nah, man, I don't think I have no envelopes. <laughs> like, all right, Tommy needs to rest for a while. So when I first started working at my old job, um, and I think I've probably told Sarah this story before, probably. but um, when I started working there, I was 27. <coughs> mm-hmm. um, the next oldest person there was in their 40s. Um, and they were still using, so they did presentations for school boards and they were still using transparencies um, with like overhead projector kind of transparencies. Um, and I did force them to learn, um, PowerPoint, but, um, the printer that we had was a really, really old Konica. It was like, okay. So this, this background we have here with the desk where you and I are sitting at the desk, if this was a real place, the Konica would have taken up two thirds of this desk. Yeah. Like it was huge. Um, and it had like 16 drawers and, and was really made for big jobs because we would print some rather large jobs on it. Right. For like um, things where you've got to do handouts and shit like yeah, that. Yeah. So if you have to print a hundred handouts and the handouts are 30 pages a piece and you have to get it stapled and they have to be printed on both sides, like all that stuff. Yeah. So thank you. Um, yeah. But, uh, it did not like transparencies. I mean, at all. I mean, nobody does. Yeah. But well, no, that's not true. Two of my bosses really did, and, and they did throw temper tantrums when I told them we weren't doing them anymore. Um. But uh, but it did not like transparencies, and it would tell me that paper was stuck. And I would you because. On those big printers, you have to like open everything yes. that tells you to open, even if there's nothing. Yeah, even stuck. if there's nothing in there, you have to open it to make it happy that it. you opened it. Yep. And it would do this <coughs> for like after every five copies. Mm-hmm. And if you're copying 300 transparencies, yeah. You spend a lot of time at the copier. Yeah. Absolutely. I've never been so grateful for PowerPoint in my life. Yeah, that's fair. Um, yeah. Anyway, so back to editing. Um, yes. But yeah, I still do print it. Um, and then the first thing I do is I grab like a notebook or something that I'm going to pair with it. Um, and then I I handwrite my edits and then I put them in manually. And I know some people think that's disgusting and awful and terrible. Um, I actually really enjoy it. I enjoy the putting it in part of the process. It doesn't actually bother me. And I do it really fast because um, I've done it that way my whole life. But... I know that that is absolutely the last thing some people want to do. Yeah. Uh, M.M. Ward is here. Hello, M.M. Ward. And hello to Ah! Godzilla and Rudy and Godzilla and King Reds by Red X. We didn't even say hello to chat today. Um, We just started talking. We just jumped right in. Like Philip DeFranco. Like Philip DeFranco. Good Lord. Oh, I forgot to mention last week that uh, Peter Mon is back. So we're getting back to the, the uh, Sarah mentions Peter Mon during her streams until he Yay! notices her portion of my life. I was giving him time to uh, take care of him because he had some other stuff happen. Um, but 
I'm back to it because he's back. So, uh, Peter Mann, please pay attention to me. I am an author tuber and you are a book tuber and you are delightful. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Ah, uh, anyway. Uh, Emma Ward is back, uh, is here to lurk. Uh, making dinner, mignonettes are demanding tuna and macaroni casserole instead of chicken and cabbage pierogies. Well I mean, then. Both of those sound good. I mean, I don't I don't really like fish, but then I don't eat meat anymore, so I guess it's kind of... Yeah, my dad was like, I'll just get you guys a couple of portobello burgers, and I'm like, I can't eat portobello burgers. Well, and here's the thing is that I haven't tried portobellos. They might have a lower mycoprotein rate. Right. And I might not actually respond to them. But, like, do I need to? You don't know until you try. And trying could be really bad. And my face is almost healed. Like, there's just barely a couple little spots left here that are still open. Yeah. But that's, it's been almost three months since I've eaten any. I was going to say, it's been a while. Yeah. So... I, uh, I, yeah, I don't, yeah. <laughs> and like, I'll still get a pimple, but I don't get like the nettles rash where it swells up and it feels like there's something in it and it's hot. Um, and it, sometimes it feels like it's weeping almost. It's, yeah. it, oh, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I thought I was just nuts and I would like wash my pillowcases. Cause I'm like, it's gotta be that my pillowcase is dirty. And I'm like, but how dirty can my pillowcase be? I've been on it for three days right right it's one thing if you like not changed your pillowcase in six weeks even a whole week i might have said like uh, maybe i'm particularly greasy or the weather is weird and so my skin's doing something odd three days no 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 No. that's ridiculous that's just silliness yeah and, you know, like, I, I have a lot of hair, and sometimes I do let my hair get greasy because I'm doing something to it or because it's, my scalp is upset about something. Um, right. But it never corresponded with that. Um, so, yeah, I've got a pain. It feels like I got punched in the arm. <laughs> I don't know why, but it's been bothering me all day. Um, I wonder if I rolled, like, I, I sleep right next to my dresser. I wonder if I rolled into my dresser in my sleep. Oh, that's quite possible. Yeah, if I would have hit it and just not noticed it, but now it, the muscle, because it's like dead on the muscle, so it would get sore. Yeah. Um, But yeah, anyway, back to editing. So yeah, to- um, I can actually pull this out for you. Um, sorry about the mess here. We're, I have, I have refused to um, address my clutter since Screamer died. Um, not that it was all that addressed before she died, but so here's Griffindale as it stands right now. This is what I've actually edited and this is what's left. (laughs) Um, so they're like, I lay them side like separate so that you can tell where they are. Sometimes I do them face down, which is what I was doing here. So I'm just going to keep doing it. And then I've got a notepad, which this one is graph paper because graph paper fills my soul. Um, in the 90s, yes. having your class notebook be uh, graph paper made you the coolest, and that has stuck that with true. me. So this one's graph paper. Um, and I do very short notes. I also do entire rewrites in it. Um, and one of the things that I do when I'm doing it is that I I will um, edit on the paper. You guys will be able to see enough anyway. Um, I edit, like, I'll, I'll do the editing on paper, you know, where you've oh, got, yeah. like, you, you write things and you circle things and you write next to them and all that. And then <coughs> if I've got, like, something fairly short, um, I'll number it and write it on the back because I just do blank backs because I can't stand front and back paper. Um, and if, if I could get books all one-sided, I would. But um, then if it's longer than that, then I go over to the notebook um, or if the back is getting too cluttered or something like that. But I also have found that I need to do things slightly more specifically sometimes um, based on the actual work itself. And I think that's a thing that we don't talk about a lot is that um, the story itself might have eccentricities that mean you have to do things a little different. 
And also, um, I don't know about anyone else, but I go through um, shitty word phases. Oh, yeah. So I think it's Gryffindale where I overuse the word that. Mm. But the next book, it won't be Griffin. It won't be that. It'll be a different word. It'll be so, something else entirely. Yeah. Right. So I have to pick up on that that trend in the story and then go back and address that. Um, and depending on where the strengths and weaknesses are in the story, where I'm at in the edits, um, because sometimes I do have to edit a novel several times, um, sometimes depending on what is going on with the story, I might decide I'm just going to focus on one thing. Like I'm going to make sure that everybody's physical traits match up from front to back. Um, and that's a much quicker edit. Right. But. You, the the harder thing about those kinds of edits is that you start to get into it and you're like, oh, okay, so I see what I'm doing here. This is pretty good. Um, and number one, you have to fight yourself because you're saying, I am doing this one thing. That is it. I am just focused, laser pointed on this one thing. Right. Um, and your brain will be like, ooh, that, that doesn't read right. And you have to tell yourself like, bitch, you're going to worry about that next edit. Right now is for this and only this. So yeah, there's Focus. a little bit. Yeah. Oh God, I fight myself a lot. Um, but also um, the other thing about that is that then you do go through the book a lot of times. Um, and I will say the one thing I see most people agree with uh, is that by the time they're done editing a book, they're really tired of that book. Yeah. So take that idea with a grain of salt. Um, it might be really useful if you have one specific area that's very weak or that's um, that you like you had a really hard time or something. You might want to do that more specific thing, but you don't want to do it for every single piece because you're going to be editing until you're 800 years old. Right. So that's, that's one, one of the of problems. Those things that like you do have to be aware of is that while technically you could edit forever at some point you have to allow it to be good enough right right and that's the other thing about editing is that at some point you do have to ad accept that it's not going to be <coughs> oh sorry that it's that's not going to be perfect Right. Um, there's no such thing as a perfect book. You can, I guarantee to you that Stephen King's book goes through much more professional editing than anyone I know personally do. And he has typos and he has things that don't flow great. And he like, right. just because they've gone through all these things doesn't mean perfection is there and perfection does not exist. No. Um, so, and uh, I mean that, that is a James Welsh quote there and I didn't even mean to do it. Um, James Welsh, if you don't know, is a skincare influencer on YouTube and he starts all of his videos with, uh, we talk about improvement over perfection because perfection doesn't exist. So, um, I do that with my students. I, and I, I try to internalize this. I mean, it's hard talking about writing it. I talk about, um, I tell my students, remember, we're not shooting for perfection. We're shooting for progress. Mm -hmm. Um, because like any skill that you are developing, you're never going to be perfect at it. It's never going to No, be humans cannot do perfect, at least not in the long term. You might be able to have a perfect run. You right, might. Right, right. Like, right. Like, but, but like, even like sports teams and things like that, when they have a perfect right. run, it's not a whole season almost ever. Um, and right. then when it is, it's a very short season kind of sport. Um, uh, MM Ward has a 15 pass edit process. Wow. Will you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah. Does it exhaust you? That's my first question. <laughs> um, I have absolutely scrapped stories, not books, but stories where I got on like edit number four and I was like, fuck this main character in their face. I hope they die. Oh, you know what? Nope. That's not a great new character. <laughs> <laughs> I might be done with this one. Yeah. I don't, you don't want to start the story hoping the main character dies. Right. That, mm. <laughs> that's not a good look. No, it's not. Emma Ward said it is exhausting. 
Uh, yeah, that's uh, if. But the thing is, is that sometimes when it's your own stuff, you have to really feel it different before you notice how detestable this person you created was or right. um, how they have no redeeming qualities or you need like a beta reader to do that or something like sometimes you become so invested in it as an author that it's yeah. hard to conceptualize like, no, but they're, they're fucking terrible. Like, I don't believe for a minute that the writers of episode one of How I Met Your Mother knew that Ted Mosby would be the most detestable character I've ever come across in sitcom television. I don't watch the show because the main character is awful. That's understandable. Yeah. I hate him. I I hate him. <laughs> like, I just can't. Oh my goodness. Hey, Justin. How are you? Thank you for stopping by. I hope you have a great time at a drag show. I'm jealous. Justin and I know each other from the Ooh. real world. Isn't that crazy? Super. Emma Ward said, but when you, uh, but when you know he is a jerk from day one because he is a freight train of issues, then sometimes you have to write a character with no redeeming quality. Yes, that is absolutely true. Sometimes you do need to find their arc. But especially like in a short story, if the person is just unlikable from A to Z, there is no reason to like keep that story. You might keep the themes and the storyline and do something else with it. But right. But like if I'm going to ask you to read three pages and you just hate this person the whole time, <laughs> you're probably right. going to be very annoyed. Yeah. You'll be like, oh, and they still suck at the end. Awesome. Thanks, bros. I just wasted some of my life. Rudy said hello to Justin, too. Aw. Rudy's a good dinosaur. Rudy the horror. Well, no, Rudy's a horror dinosaur. Thank you very much. That doesn't mean he can't be good. He can no. be a good horror dinosaur. He is your nightmare. Well, that doesn't mean he can't be good. Maybe good dinosaurs are somebody's horror. I don't know. I don't know about that. I think Ken King Red Spy Red X would argue with you. <laughs> I think Ken, King Red Spy Red X would argue with me regardless of what I said. That also might be true. <laughs> um, so I found this. Um, I went back through. I have a. I have a Pinterest board um, that's all about editing. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just it's everything from like a checklist of elements of a good scene to um uh commentary on editing to examples of editing so like not necessarily like a, a flow sheet of how to edit but a bunch of different kind of pieces yeah just a lot of yeah a lot of information about like the one i'm looking at right now like i'm scrolling through because it was one i wanted to look at but like this one is just a an example of things you should have in flashbacks um, if you're going to use a flashback, you need to have established a bond between the reader and the protagonist. You need to establish the goal of the story. You need to have established a threat to that goal. And you need to... Uh, hang on. You going to sneeze? Uh, you need to use a story that compels readers to know what happened in the past. Yeah. And, you know, um, I know I talk about... I talk about Stephen King a moderate amount um, because I really enjoy Stephen King and I know a lot of people have feelings, but quite honestly, you can keep them to yourself. Um, but <laughs> one of the things that one of the, the best instances of a flashback I've ever seen is in Wolves of the Kala, where about a quarter of that book yes. is a flashback to Father Callahan's history, which is largely a flashback to the end of... Um, Salem's, Salem's lot, lot and then what how Father Hall Callahan gets to this story um, and even though it had been ages since I read Salem's Lot I was compelled by that and I will say oddly enough one of the worst examples of getting us into a flashback was Wizard and Glass oh yeah the flashback itself is fucking spectacular once you know why you're there yeah but, but I know lots of people who were just like, I'm not doing it because I have no fucking idea what I'm just, where are we? Me? What are we doing? I don't know what's happening. 
Well, I was really mad that they stopped the like they stopped right. They stopped a the heated middle, story. Yeah, in to the flash really back really important part right. of the story. Right, and then flash you back to what seems useless at the moment. Yeah, and here's the thing: like this, I think, is an excellent example of something we can learn from. Um, that like ah. This was so frustrating for me as a reader. Right. So I should try to avoid Absolutely. That. Absolutely. Okay, here we got M.M. Ward's list, and then we got a couple other comments. M.M. Nice. Ward reads the book aloud to yourself and listen to it aloud. I do like listening to it aloud. I don't like reading aloud, um, even though I will do it. But, like, I just hate listening to myself read because I have a hard time reading aloud. Uh, beta reading suggestions. I have yet to find a good group of beta readers um i tend to get back about one out of every 10 um so that's a whole that's a whole separate problem that's a that's a i have picked the wrong people the wrong people have picked me that kind of thing and it's a, you know life happens that's part of the reason you buffer with beta readers is because their life d does happen and yeah. they are not beholden to you you're not paying them they're doing this as a favor to you or because they enjoy reading or whatever or a combination of the two so do keep that in mind as if beta reading is part of your process, especially um, that you you want more beta readers than you think you need. Because inevitably some of them are going to, you know, my mom got sick or um, I got COVID and then I had to make up a bunch of work. And so right. I just didn't have time. Um, and beta reading is a different ask than asking someone to just read. Yes, it is. So um, grammar first pass. Okay. That scares me because I changed so much that I think if I did grammar my first pass. Okay, I'll keep going though. Uh, word consistency, names, places, things. That is a big one for me. Um, and I have a really bad habit of if I'm not sure what pronouns a character has, I will default to they, them. Oh, yeah. And that works okay in the real world because you're not assigning them a gender at that point. Not right. great if on your fifth pass you realize that you just didn't use the right pronouns for a person and the reader won't know what person you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> because they've never used those pronouns before. <laughs> so that's one of the things that uh, that word consistency gets me on. Plot, path, verification, and holes. That is super good. That is, I would never have even thought to refer to it as that thing, but that that seems like a really good way to encompass what that would consist of. Right. I like that a yeah. lot. I like that phrasing of it too. That tells me what I, I want. And that's always a problem for me is when it's vague, my brain doesn't know where the thresholds are. Right. Um, timeline event references forward and backwards. Okay. Um. Character that, arcs. What's that? Oh, I was going to say the timeline event references. Mm -hmm. uh, that's something that um, because the. <clears throat> um, so as I'm looking at moving forward in this edit um, in July, one of the things that I've I've like starred. These are the things I need to edit in July. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things I wanted to get done because there's so much of so much of the characters reactions and then therefore the plot mm -hmm. moves based on time okay um and wh what happens when and you know what i don't use a lot of time and it's probably because my number one anxiety is time right so if That's, i start to yeah. put time in a book and it starts to be even the slightest bit wrong it's going to make me sick oh yeah you're going like, to yeah. have a moment. So that when I read that, I was like, I bet people do need to do that. But I am really weird about it because all of my, like, my my pre-raid, pre-COVID uh, anxieties were all time-based. Um, the world has changed, and now I'm just scared of everything. Well, no, I was kind of afraid of everything to begin with. Although I saw a skunk in person for the first time. <laughs> And my fear of skunks has now changed from, uh-oh, they might spray me, to if I hug that thing, it's going to spray me. But you really want to hug it. So I really want to hug it. 
I really want to hug it. Okay, anyway. They are, they look like waddling cats. And they bounce just like Peppy Le Pew. Like, that was not a lie. Yes. Oh, anyway. Let's get back to editing. Sorry. <laughs> um, character arcs and behavior. That's always really good. I hate when I um, notice that I've accidentally had a character act entirely out of yes. their behavior. A lot of times it's when I have a bigger cast and I confuse two of the characters. Um, and that is one of the reasons that I'm really funny about the character name thing. I know a lot of people will recommend to you to not like you don't put like a Carissa and a Clarissa and a Kara in a story together, unless there's a specific reason you needed to do that. Yeah. Um, but I'm really funny about it because I, I do have a problem confusing which characters did what. Um, forbidden words had that live the same thing I was saying about me being a fucking idiot and clutching onto a word and being like, just stick the word in there. Um, it'll be okay. Right. It'll be fine. If I put the word in there, everything will be okay. The dreaded said. Um, yeah, that's a whole thing. Uh, name a holic. Do you adjust your names later? Do you name them at all when you start? I know some people um, do things that are more like a main character and female lead and things like that. That is more of a loose thing so that they can adjust the characters to fit the story more later, which is cool. Yeah. Um, I can't do that, though. Um, Jess Nicole said, having the computer read to me and also reading it aloud, uh, out loud myself has helped me out tremendously lately. I do enjoy that a great deal. I will say that I actually, um, I have one story that I did like a story video on called Gone Fishing on my, um, YouTube. And that took me twice as long as I expected it to, because once I read it out loud, I had to adjust some stuff. Yeah. So, but I, I prefer to have my computer read it to me just because I am self-conscious about my reading out loud skills. Um, then Emma Moore does chapter length equalization. I refuse to do that. Um, I understand that for some genres it's really important or whatever, but I just refuse to do that. I, uh, I don't know. I really enjoy having varying lengths and stuff. I know some people are really into having it set up a certain way. Um, 12 is formatting page layouts, dangling word phrases, footers, and headers. Um, I, I have a massive formatting boner. I love it. I love it so much. <laughs> I do. Like, do you just want me to format stuff for you? Do you want me to, do you want to send me things? I'll format them. I'll send them back to you. You can tell me how to adjust it and then I'll format them again. <laughs> Such a nerd. I love that shit. Um, chapter headings. I also don't really do chapter headings. I've written, I think, one story in my whole life that I named or chapter headed, um, the, the chapters for. I tend to also do sections, which is part of the problem with adjusting chapter length is that, um, I regularly really have sections. Have, yeah. I have, I regularly have sections that are one, one paragraph or less long. So that's just, and some of that is because in horror, you need to have beats that hit really hard. And a lot of times right. ending a scene is how you hit hard. Um, so that is part of, part of the genre. Um, grammar, tri triple pass with clarity, conscious, uh, conscience, conciseness. Um, oh, scrolled. You can't, can't read a word if it's under the thing. Uh, formality, punctuation. Okay. So, so you do do a second grammar thing okay that makes me way less nervous because that would be my thing is if i did grammar early it would just be fucked by the time i got to the end of it <laughs> um, i would probably do two grammar passes as well because it, if i'm reading something and the grammar is bad i'm gonna it's gonna bug me until i fix it yeah and i think part of that for me is that was a large part of my work for 10 years. Like that yeah. editing, that editing piece, that was the main part of my editing. Mm -hmm. And so like that being the like central focus for so long, I'm like grammar Nazi here must. Right. Um, like things like, like homonyms or like, um, the um 
So I have a big thing for the Oxford comma. Mm -hmm. I firmly believe in the use of the Oxford comma. Um, I'm not going to judge you if you don't. Okay, that's not true. I'm not going to judge you harshly. I will judge you if you don't use an Oxford comma. Um, yeah. But <clears throat> I'm, I'm learning to be one with the fact that some people are okay not using it. I'm going to start a fight the next time you're at my house. You're mean. I, I'm indifferent, but someone in my I house know. hates them. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. And he is also a writer, so. <laughs> going to start a fight! Why are you making problems? Oh, Why? Spence is on, uh, on YouTube now because, uh, because Spence was lonely on Twitch. I'm sorry you were lonely on Twitch. I like having you Aww. in both places, Spence. You're always welcome to come hang out. Anywhere For you sure. feel comfortable. And then 15 is format verification. Um, I want to make this very clear to everyone. I don't publish a lot of books, but my husband physically does. Like, they're not always his books, but he, he does a lot of, like, uploading for publishing. Um... Whatever happens with Amazon, it wasn't your fault. It was their fault. I promise it was their fault. They did tell you that was right. They told you it was right. And then they sent it back to you a day later. They did that. They did that to you. And and we're all here with you. Because they fucking suck. <laughs> That's exactly right. I, I get so sad when I see somebody like, I uploaded it yesterday and it said it was fine. And I'm like, they did. I know they did. And you're not lying. They're just awful. <sighs> see spence is on my side oxford come all the way all right well it's gonna be i'm gonna start a cage fight it's gonna be you and spence against travis we can um, take him spence I believe yeah it. he's a pussy um <laughs> uh yeah so so yes um and jess said be uh careful you might have just got yourself in deep with that question i sense a full inbox in your future i love formatting i really do i formatted a book for um a friend of mine and she asked me how much to she like she was supposed to pay me i'm like i literally don't know i'm like i i don't i just like doing it so i, I don't know here's my paypal I... just send me money i guess if you really feel inclined <laughs> this is how i get my joy it is. There's something so fulfilling. It's it's like deep cleaning to me or like um, power washing. Oh, yeah. It like it evens everything out and it makes everything look clean and crisp. And my boss thinks I'm ridiculous because I am I'm hostile about the way like release of informations from the state look because they're oh, on their 400th yeah. copy. Yeah. And it makes me want to throw up. And half of them are like tilted on the page. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh just reprint the original. Stop making a copy of a copy of a copy. You're making me crazy. Yeah. <sighs> that was something that uh, when we so and I, I this again goes back to my old job. Um because it was a long, a long running nonprofit, um, and because they still used things, because there's some things in education that don't change. Mm -hmm. So there's no reason to change something just because. And instead of having an assistant update something, they would do that. They would make copies of copies of copies. And I'd be like, why? Why? Let me just retype this. No, that will take too much time. Yes, but it won't look like shit. Right. Like I can use an elementary school ruler to measure the thickness of the lines on your form. Right. It's done. It, is, it needs to be put to sleep. It has lived its full life. Yes. Let it go. Let it go. Yeah. It's, it's a... And I'm, I'm of the opinion that it's often, I think it's often people, and I'm, I'm trying really hard not to be ageist here, mm -hmm. but it's often people who are older and they are uncomfortable 
with modern technology. The whole idea of like Luddites and that whole, you know, I don't want to move on tends to be in the older crowd because it's harder to learn the further you come from having learned. Right. Because um, it's not, it doesn't, and especially if, and I think this is, this is one of the things that happened with, um, with a lot of the people that, that I worked with. And, and I want to make it very clear. I loved these people. I still love these people. Um, they're good people. They're passionate about what they do and they're good at their jobs. They're not idiots by any stretch of the imagination, but many of them have been in their jobs, um, for 20, 30, 40 years. And when they went from when they went from typewriters to like the Wang, mm -hmm. which was the first computers they had, yes, like, that was huge for them. And they that were really makes me think of Stephen that. King too. I know, right? Because um, his wife used to tell people he was out beating his Wang. <laughs> and then, but then when they went from Wangs to you know. PCs, then that was a big jump. And when they started, you know, all of these other things that came up and it, I think a lot of them felt overwhelmed. It's so much technology. It's so many new things. And all they want to do is help people be better at what, you know, at educating children. And so because that's not a priority, technology is not a priority for them. It frightens them a little bit. I see. That's probably true. I'm trying to see where this functions. I'm really is. hoping that that is not like that. I am not like that when I'm old, older. Yeah, there's multiple. Um, there are multiple uh, different multiple animals. Last week I was a panda. Yeah. And a wolf. And it's in beta right now. So yeah. it's not as responsive as it could be. You'll notice like sometimes when I do this, like. Well, I'll also out. your internet is kind of yeah, um, it's an anomaly as well. Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. I also have a program on um, Steam that does it as well, but it's actually like I think one of them's free and one of them's paid. Um, but I can't remember that what it's is called. Delightful. Except for the the burger that you don't the like. The burger head. I do not like the burger. You head. do not like the burger. That's we'll have to play with that at some point on the channel. By the way, thank you for coming, Jess. I I realized that you were new here. Um, and I meant to say it, but we've been talking really steadily. Um, usually there's a lull somewhere, but even with just the two of us, there's not been much of a lull because editing makes people crazy. True story. Yeah. Um, I really like a lot of M.M. Ward's um, process there. And I think a lot of it would be really useful. Um, obviously, some of it, as I said, wouldn't apply to me. Or wouldn't be something that I would at least not need a whole pass for. Um, but I think that's kind of part of learning from someone else's process is that you have to adjust it to your process. Um, you know, we're all yes. doing we're all doing a hybrid of the same thing. So, um, but yeah, I, I really like that. That I think I'll go back and probably write that list down and see if I can tweak it to be a more direct. I used to have a much better system. Like back in the day when I was doing short stories and stuff, I had the, I printed and color coded. So my green was my first edit. My red was my second edit. My blue was my third edit. My black was my fourth edit. Um, and that was also in an effort to not have my printer run out of ink because <clears throat> at the time um, I had a printer that did not print if it was out of black ink. Yeah. It wouldn't print in color either. Um, so I went ahead and... Uh, just started printing in color so that I could go through the colored ink at the same speed as black ink. Cause I started to buy, you know, you buy the sets. Um, I yep. started to get like a, a backlog of colored ink and I was just like, okay, I'm just, I'm just going to print We're some stuff in green then. Right. Yeah. So. Cause I have green. Gotcha. There is lots of green. Yes. 
Um, Jess said, I'm editing. Uh, <clears throat> I'm still editing the project I wrote for Nana last year. So I was intrigued by the title. Well, thank you for coming. Um, yeah, we like it. <clears throat> yeah, I love having new people here. That's one of my favorite things about being on YouTube and Twitch and everything is meeting the new folks and uh, having a having a chit chat with some folks that I haven't known before. Um Emma Ward said formatting was the hardest thing to to find. Oh, Billy Corgan's here. Uh, I hope you're not the real Billy Corgan because that guy is a dick. Um, although my friend did ask him three days after his band broke up how his band was doing. Because he had not seen the news. So awkward famous person interaction that I will disclose to you. Although I don't disclose all of the awkward famous people interactions I know of. Someone I knew threw a blue, blueberry schnapps on someone famous. Well, famous I mean, light. Famous. <laughs> Rockford famous. Do you say I am a dig? No, I didn't say you're a dig. I said you're a douchebag. Did I? Fucker? I think you said dick. Dick? Moron? Idiot? Those all apply. Um, Self-important hack? Maybe. <laughs> I don't like you anymore. Oh, well, okay. That's all good. I didn't like you to start with, so it's cool. I I can't believe I'm having this much fun with Billy Corgan. Um, <laughs> people told me for years that if I just listened to more Smashing Pumpkins, I would have more fun with Billy Corgan. <laughs> Actually, to be real, I like Smashing Pumpkins. I just think Billy's a dick. That's fair. He's just, I'm he's a, a rude asshole. So. I am a firm believer in the um, concept of death of the artist. Um, yeah, I don't. As far as like art goes, like yeah. you can appreciate good art and still deeply dislike and disagree with the artist. Yeah. Yeah, that's I. the thing is, is that like. I don't think about Billy Corgan. I just thought about it because he was here. Anytime somebody brings him up, I think about how rude he is. Um, but yeah, Chelsea, uh, Elizabeth Sharp is here. Hello, Chelsea. Thank you for coming. I am arguing with either a bot or a fake Billy Corgan. Either way, um, I do enjoy a good argument. And he keeps writing um, and it's showing up on this, but it's not show. Oh, it's because I have top chat on. Why am I a dick? Why am I an idiot? Because you're rude to people. I mean, you're not really Billy Corgan, but Billy Corgan is rude. I am Billy. Yes, you are Billy. I'm sure you are. Um, it could be Billy, just probably not that Billy. Yeah, I mean, you might be a person named Billy. That's true. The weather over here is currently uh, very calm. Yesterday we had a hell of a storm, though. Did you? The whole ass thing. Yeah. Yeah. During the day, we lost some power. Um, wow. But I wasn't here, so it didn't bother me any. Um, and then <laughs> and then while I was streaming last night, I actually was worried. Um, but we didn't have any tornado alarms. We had tornado alarms day before yesterday. I um, got those. Did you? Oh, because you're yep. still on the Rockford phone, huh? Because, yeah. And so it um, it tells me. It tells me there are tornado warnings in your area. <laughs> and I'm like, no, they're not. Right. Well, they I weren't mean, in mine either. They were in, <laughs> they were out in the sticks. Right. But yeah. Yeah. They were, there was like, my city's here and there was a triangle here that yeah. was all under the warning, but I'm like right here. So I was like, oh, well, I'm okay. It's all good. Yeah. Nothing, almost nothing hits the city because we're in a valley. So. So you know just... that means if it does hit you guys, it's going to be ugly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's true. Okay, I'm done talking to Billy. All right. So back to editing. We went through so all of we talked MM about stuff. And we talked about beta readers. There was one other thing in this. I was looking at this before we started. Oh, um no we kind of talked about that already 
Oh, here it is. Where are you at, Chelsea? It's 81. Oof. So, it's supposed to be 94 next week here. Oh, really? I kind of want to die. <sighs> okay. So, um, oh, here was a question. Do you let your manuscript breathe? Absolutely. Before you edit. Absolutely. No, what I'm not blocking the, you. What is the minimum amount of time that you allow a manuscript to breathe? The minimum? Yeah. Uh, usually 30 days. That seems to be the standard of what I've heard. Yeah, I I tend to go longer just because I have a day job and all that stuff and I have to um like I, I just have to make time for it. Right. Um but typically typically it's like thirty days is like my minimum. Short stories is usually closer to thirty days. Novels are usually closer to ninety to hundred and twenty, just depending on my busyness. And then more, I, how long do you let yours breathe and how long? <sighs> Good Lord. All right. Uh, uh, it's, um, I'm going to help you. There you go. Um, yeah, I let mine rest three to 12 months, but then I'm always leaving one project and starting another. Yeah, MM Ward's got like a whole layer system. <clears throat> so, That's but awesome. three to 12 months is like a really good. Yeah. The, the piece that I'm going to be editing in July, I finished the end of April last year. Um, and I did have plans to edit it last year and then we bought a house. It happens so, like that. Yeah. Um, so I did not. Yeah. I thought I was going to start editing like this weekend, um, again on Gryffindale, but then Dreamer died and I was just like, well, I'll just get to it when I get to it. Right. So. For more information on writing and editing in your moods, go see last week's stream. Right. Uh, Emma Ward said, that I find the longer I wait, the better I can see it. Spence says, I've never successfully returned to and edited a project. Um, it is a hard thing. Sometimes I think one of the things that helps me the most, especially if I have something short that I can do this with, um, is to have someone else just like read it or read a part of it. Um, and, and like, assure me that it's not as bad as my heart tells me it is. Because <laughs> yeah. that's all it is, is it's just like my emotions lying to me. Um, yeah. And I rationally understand that, but, but does my brain care? Probably not. No. So. That's because our brains hate us. Yeah. And they don't realize, your brain doesn't realize that you are they and they are you and... It is self-defeating to do that. Yep. And M.M. Ward said, someday you'll be like me and look down and realize you have a million words waiting. I definitely <laughs> have stuff that I've like lost. And then I look at it and I'm like, what? I wrote this? What? I have done that. I've, um, again, when I was looking through this, this bunch of things, um, I found one that I, I've actually taken on because I've had this, um, board for a long time. Um, the, uh, so the, the Stephen King quote where he says, kill your darlings. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think that's from him. No, no. I think he, I think that's a, is that a requote? I think so. I think so. Um, let's find out. I'm looking. But one of the things somebody suggested. Oh no! Apparently, is apparently it is Stephen King. I didn't realize that. 
It is. Oh, Faulkner. Faulkner said, uh, "Murder your doll, dar, uh, darlings." Oh, uh, okay. Um. So somebody says, um, "Don't necessarily delete or kill. Um, take out." whatever it is, if, it, if it's valuable, if you if you find value in it somehow, not just, um, I don't want to cut this, but rather I really like this detail or I really like this writing or whatever and put it in a cutscene file. Um, and you can always use it later in something else that might be better. I 100% disagree with that. I would never do that. No, 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 I, I guarantee to you, I'd never open that file again. Um, it'll never apply the way I want it to apply. And it's just a way to give yourself a thing to cling to, to pretend that you're going to use it later. It's just, it's just extra clutter. I mean, that might not be true of someone else's writing process, but in mine, it's just extra clutter. That's fair. Chelsea you said, are also very yeah. much a minimalist. I am. When it comes I to am. writing. Yeah. Yeah, I I have, like, I am very fulfilled by the delete button. <laughs> um, Chelsea said, in my novel, I'm working on the first draft for the current word count is 68,501. I still have two more chapters left to go. That's not, I mean, that's, that's a pretty good yeah. area there. That's pretty... Depending on how long your chapter, I mean, it, unless your chapters were absurd, that's still going to be a good area. But depending on how long your chapters are, is depending on how long it's going to end up being. Um, my final chapter always ends up being shorter. It always ends up being much more, I don't know. It's like minimalist. Yeah. Well, n no, but like, it's, it's like the people sitting on the, on their front stoop waving goodbye. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't, it doesn't need to be. It's just a wrap up. Right, right. It's almost a, a, a like a, what's the end of one epilogue, but um, it's not. Oh, quite. yeah. Gotcha. Uh, Jess said, could potentially be website content, character sheet, deleted scene, though. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I get other people, like, yeah, but I just, it would never, yeah, it would never work for me. All the clutter and stopping the garage sale at the library for more words on the way home. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sometimes I worry about, like, if I just keep buying books, this floor is just going to go down eventually. <sighs> uh, when uh, when we moved, my sister and I went through our book collection. And, and just so you have a kind of an idea, when we moved in together five years ago, um, I brought 10 boxes of books and they were like, um, they were the size of like a medium Amazon box. Like you could fit 30, 40 books in there mm -hmm. if they were paperback, small paperbacks or whatever. Um, my sister brought 12 or 15. When we moved... We got rid of a large box of books and we still had like 30 boxes of books to move. Yeah. Um, and we have 10 bookshelves and they are all full. Yeah. Oh, no, that's not true. We have two partially full ones, um, but that will change you guys can't see it because of the background, but the bookshelf in here, the books, the, the non-music books that are on this bookshelf are going to go upstairs. And then this bookshelf will also be full and the bookshelves upstairs will all be full. Well then. So. I've run out of places to put music in this office. So. The book addiction is real. It is. <sighs> yeah. So does anybody have anything, any questions, anything you do that that we haven't touched on any ideas thoughts anything like that i don't want to leave anybody out that part of the idea of this is to have like a full ass discussion and not just me talking to a stupid fox hey i'm not stupid mm -hmm. listen 
That is mean and cruel and unnecessary. Mm. It is. Says you. I'm sure that there are plenty of people who would agree with me. Billy Corgan probably agrees with you. I, I'm going to say no response to that. Well. Um, yeah. I don't know. I don't have a whole lot else to touch on here. It's been a long week this week. I don't know why, but it just has been. Um, oh, yeah, I do. Um, we had a possible COVID exposure at work and things just were silly. Uh, Emma Ward said, question, changing ink colors to designate changes, moves, new words, deletes, thoughts. I loved doing the ink color change. I really did. Um, and you can always control all and then just set it all to black, like without. Right. Without any real work. Um, just that I agree with the fox, but I don't know her that well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, like, Jess. I, I don't talk that way to work. normal people. She's my best friend. So that's, um, and that's, that's CJ and I'm Sarah. I just, we didn't do an opening cause we started talking. We just dove right in. Yeah. Emma Ward said, uh, my documents look like unicorn vomit. Yeah. I had, um, at one point I was doing a, um, highlighter ink pen combo to keep track of like what parts of things I was editing and what, um, like what, what each part meant and why, I, what I was editing and, you know, is this grammar or is this story or is this setting or is this, um, and it just, it was, it was really bright. <laughs> <laughs> like unicorn vomit. <laughs> um, Jess said, where to build my website suggestions. I used to be a big fan of, um, just like, what's it called? The WordPress. WordPress. Yeah. But I'm now using Squarespace at my office and I kind of like it. And I use Wix for my, my website. For Which my is very similar. Studio. Yeah. It's, I, I would say both Squarespace and Wix are comparable yeah. to each other. And they're easier than WordPress. Yes. Much so, easier. So yeah, if you're, if ease is a question, then that would be my suggestion. Um, if like, I mean, if you want to spend a bunch of money, if you want to have someone build you one, that's beautiful. But yeah, um, and if but you yeah. can, if you can build yourself a Facebook page or an Instagram page, you can do Wix or Squarespace. Like, they've got templates. They, yeah, they make yeah. it as easy as possible for you. So, Bluehost. I don't. Is that part of WordPress? Or is that a separate company? Because Squarespace does not lose me. Uh, WordPress took a lot for me to learn to use it. And in fact, I just realized just a little website I'm on there that I should probably take down because I'm paying for it for no reason. Um, I haven't even logged into it in like a year. <sighs> but um, yeah, it's it, it's somewhat overly complicated. Um, it It's a lot more like this is going to date me, but it's a lot more like editing your MySpace pages used to be. Yes. So. I was going to say that. Oh, okay. <laughs> nope. Good. It's not just me. Nope. It's not just you. And my board said, I missed you guys so much. Been too busy to catch everybody. I love seeing you. I'm glad you're here. I really appreciate it. Same. Um, Spence said, my issue generally is by the time I get through the end of the first draft, I see all the changes I need to make uh, to make it amazing. And it's like, okay, but there's no salvaging at this time to restart. Um, yep. yeah, I don't, I don't have that problem. I am, I am a, I have been an advocate of the editing process for my whole life. I am very into editing. I think editing is super useful. And quite honestly, I think the result of, of a good edit is so fulfilling to me that the idea of not editing, um, doesn't make any sense in my brain. Yeah. Um, but I do understand that point of view. It just isn't my experience. So, um, but I do also sometimes like I'll send something to Travis and be like, can you read the first paragraph or two of this and tell me if this is totally useless or <laughs> like, is this absolute crap? Yeah. Um, Jeff said, Spence, you can only eat an elephant one bite at a time, break it into small pieces to lessen the overwhelm. That's true. 
I agree, Spence. You can do it. That's we believe true. in you. Yes. I accidentally hit the mute button, so I made myself talk again. Sorry, guys. If you heard me talk a second time, that's because I hit the wrong button. Oh, so, yeah. Um, you wrote some form of large chunk of words as a huge first step to keep going. Don't, don't give up. Yes, absolutely. Um, I think people... I think the meme, or at least that's as close to <coughs> a meme as you could get during this period of time, but the cliche of, like, the author who um, never finishes a book, that isn't as absurd as it seems. Like, yeah. remember that if you finish something, that's huge. Like, huge. Don't sell yourself short on that. Even if you finish something that sits on a shelf forever, you've done a lot more than a lot of people. Oh, kicked my camera again. Uh, than a lot of people who thought they were going to do a bunch. So don't. Yeah. And I think the the idea of, and we've talked about this several times today, um, the idea of breaking it down into small chunks. Sarah suggested doing a chapter at a time. Um, you know, just focus on small things. Mm -hmm. um, so that you don't feel because I I agree with you Spence I feel overwhelmed when I look and I I feel the same way like yeah. this could be an incredible story but it's going to take so much work to get it there that I just feel overwhelmed well but, and that that's part of the reason I stopped doing sprints is because when I go to edit if I have a 15 minute sprint I have to get my bearings I have to get back into it and I have to start editing and I read slow um, and I read even slower when I'm editing. So we would do a 15 minute sprint and I would do maybe two pages. Right. And it just, it felt very wasteful because I had to get my bearings over and over again. And so that's a big part of the reason I stopped doing the sprints is editing. So, and I know some people it works for, it just doesn't work for me. And you got to do what works for you. Yeah. Which and I I'm, think is, is the big takeaway here is that each of us has things that will work for us and things that won't. And just because, and I think we talked about toxic productivity a couple yes. of weeks ago. Yeah. And I think this squarely falls into that category of remembering that everybody functions differently. We all come to our art differently and we bring different things to it and we we're going to function differently because our brains work differently and absolutely we have different experiences and so yeah we're, and we're already a bunch of weirdos because we're making up stories oh, in our heads like yeah let's be real that's weird so weird um spence said at the time it doesn't even feel negative like it's inspiring oh if i change this this would be much better uh to what i wanted it to be but they're like fundamental changes every time yeah, I've had that happen. Um, a lot of the time, I either have to focus myself on going through and doing that one fundamental change only as an edit, or <laughs> and I've done this and it, it does bite you in the ass, but you can't forget it. Um, I go in and I do a find replace to fix it. And then, um, then I just have to fix where the find replace went to rye. So... Um, yeah, I'm just, but that does light a fire under me because <laughs> the find replace doesn't make any sense. Nope. Um, so yeah, that's a whole thing, but yeah, that, I don't think you're even close to alone in that though. I think that's a pretty common yeah. problem, you know, that's, and that's a big oh, part sure. of the reason that, that the NaNoWriMo tradition of, um, don't stop and edit exists is because a lot of people will stop to edit and they don't continue on um yeah. because they want because this they part get... to be perfect right yeah so i i um, absolutely understand i will say this so the the piece that i am editing in july mm -hmm. um is a story that i have rewritten multiple times over the last how old am I? I'm 43. Over the last 33 years. I'm, I'm still working I'm on it. I'm, yeah, I'm really, 
But my thing is, and this and this is the thing that I have to keep reminding myself, is that I really do believe that the story needs to be told. Yeah. Um, and so eventually I will get there. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Ward said, duct tape your inner editor to the chair and toss them in the back, uh, into the back closet of your mind with your imp. Yeah. I mean, sometimes... Sometimes we are not doing ourselves any fucking favors with our brains. Ugh. Like, good God. Why do they do the things they do? Thanks, guys. Thanks, thanks, gray matter. Right. What are you doing Why do you there? have to be like that and That's... do anything to you? I carry you around. I feed you. I give you warmth. And you're not particularly smooth, so can you please just be happy with what I've given you? <laughs> Although, mine might be pretty smooth these days. Might have just, like, ironed my brain. I doubt it. Well, Smooth Brain Sarah. They call me Smooth Brain Sarah. Dumb as dumb can be. You should have a character. I am a character. For an RPG or in a story called Smooth Brain Sarah. I had a character that was assigned to me when I played Pugmire one time, and his name was Bernie, and I did a Bernie Sanders impression for the whole night, and it made me so tired. (laughs) Yeah, I was a dog named Bernie. Ah, good lord. Good times, good times. Yup, yup. All right, well, I don't know. I don't see any more questions. Um, It looks like we've kind of come to the- a good conversation. Yeah, absolutely. I want to thank everybody who came tonight, especially um, anyone who's never been here before. I thank you especially for coming by. Um, it was very nice of you to come. It's nice to have new people in the chat. Nice to hear new points of view and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. So why don't you go ahead and actually introduce yourself, Fox Lady? I can do that. Hello. My name is CJ Bloyer. I am a fox. I'm not really. This is just an avatar. Um, but I am a writer of things as well as a piano instructor. My links can be found below in my link tree. And, uh, yeah, I'm here every Friday. Sometimes I'm a fox. Sometimes I'm a panda. Sometimes you're a person. Sometimes I am a person on occasion. On occasion. Although with this new avatar thing, I might just be animals permanently. I might block it. (laughs) Rude. (laughs) Just here talking to a cartoon freaking fox over here. You know, you could be a cartoon, too. Uh, no, I'm not a VTuber. Um... Okay, so, yep, and I am Sarah Sharnaber, and this is my channel. There's links to CJ's stuff and then some other guests that I have regularly over here uh, down below. So if you aren't familiar with everybody down on that list, I, I suggest you t- check them out. Um, they're uh, the people they're I amazing. associate with. Oh, it's okay. I'm no problem spelling my name. No big deal. Um, but, yeah, there there's a bunch of people down there who I particularly enjoy, and I think they are very wonderful, and I appreciate Anyone who stops and checks them out. Um, I know that a lot of people have had a lot of shit going on for the last year. I don't know. Well, not even year, year. probably six months or so yeah. where a lot of people have like stopped posting as often as they used to. But I, I get the impression that a lot of people are starting to even back out. I think it was, you know, the is it post COVID or is it not um, yeah. might have been a, a factor for a lot of people. Oh, um, for sure. But I do suggest that you go back and check out people that might not be posting as often right now. Um, Because, yeah, it seems like it seems like it has been a hot mess. Not you too, 2022. Yeah. Yeah. It has been like that for real. Um, Yeah. Yeah. That is true. Yeah. It's been a lot. So, um, but I am also I'm on Twitch on Monday nights playing Stardew Valley and on Thursday nights playing games with random folks. Um, on Wednesday, the first, third, and fifth Wednesday of every month, I am on the, the Onyx Path channel playing, uh, Scarredlands Dungeons and Dragons with some peoples and rolling some dice and, uh, saying bad words. And then on Fridays, we do this hot mess, um, which varies in topic. So if you have a topic you particularly want us to cover, feel free to shoot me a message. Um, I'm basically Wordsmith Sarah everywhere. I am on Twitter the most. Um, yes, yeah, Spence plays on Thursday sometimes. Once in a blue moon, CJ makes it. Um, but that's Yo. literally like when the stars align. Um, it's true. 
But yeah, so um, thank you guys so much. Yeah, it is. It is Friday. Um, <laughs> thank you guys so much for hanging out. We will see you guys next week. It's a 7 p.m. Central that we do these chats. Uh, if there's a topic you particularly want us to talk about, do absolutely send us an email or a text or, or text, an email or a Twitter message or everything. Um, if you text me, I will be very confused because I hate text messaging. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> she said, I've been sitting here going, that's neat. Sarah's live on Wednesday. <laughs> Yeah, but it's way better to think it's Wednesday and have it be Friday than for you to think yes. it's Friday and have it be Wednesday. Yes, yes. Thinking it's Friday when it's not Friday is pretty upsetting. Unless you think it's Friday and it's Sunday. Ugh. In which case. Although, if you're in the States, Sunday this weekend shouldn't be yes. too much of a... That's true. Sunday is a is the day before a holiday this weekend in the U.S. So if you are in the States... Um, have a good Memorial Day. It's Memorial Day yep, at the beginning of Memorial summer. Memorial Day. Okay. I get Memorial Day and Labor Day confused because they're the same basic topic and one starts the summer and one ends the summer. And True story. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway. All right. I'm done. I'm done talking crazy. Um, <laughs> it has been a long ass week, Spence. Um, I love you guys so much. Thank you for coming. I really appreciate Thank it. You. And we will we see you guys you. next week. So, bye. Bye.